The Sea of Thieves is a place of magic, mystery, and adventures around every corner. Every time you wake up at a tavern at a various outpost, you never quite know what's in store for you. He fell off. Oh, that boat is gonna hit! Oh, God! Oh, God, what do I do? I'm hiding. Oh, my God. Wait, wait, get off! Get off! Oh, Lord. Hey, we got border, we got border. Border, border, Oh, he got me. Oh, they sink, no. they sunk us, they sunk they us by sunk that. Us. <laughs> There's no way! That's what? absurd. What? We were dry on bottom, I promise you. I know, they don't, they literally don't go. That is... I died. What? What? Hello, new pirates. Experienced pirates and every pirate in between. Welcome to the Sammy Stormfish Academy for Sailors. Whether you're brand new and just getting your sea legs, or you're just looking for a refresher, the Sammy Stormfish Academy Sailors is the right place for you. There are a total of seven outposts on the Sea of Thieves. They're marked with the word Outpost on the map, but their official names are Golden Sands, Sanctuary, Plunder, Daggertooth, Guyan's Grave, Ancient Spire, and Morrow's Peak. Each one is laid out a bit different, but includes all of the same main structures. There are several different types of shops on the outposts where you can buy items and customize your pirate and your ship. Before we can dive into that, however, we have to go over the currencies you'll be working with. There are three different currencies, ancient coins, gold coins, and doubloons. Ancient coins are obtained using real-world money, but can be obtained through the plunder pass and through the super rare ancient skeleton encounter. Doubloons are obtained by turning in special items to Lorena, located outside the tavern, such as ritual skulls, ashen keys, and ashen chests. You can also earn doubloons by turning in gifts and Reaper's Bounty Chests to the Reaper's Hideout, or by completing certain commendations. We'll cover more about the Reapers in a later episode. The third type of currency is the most common, gold. You'll learn this several ways, but the most commonly known is by handing in loot to the varying factions. There are only four out of seven factions located on the outpost. The first of these factions are the Gold Hoarders. Marked by the green tent and the golden key symbol, they will collect any gold item or chest. It's also here that you'll collect your first voyage to embark onto the Sea of Thieves with. Each member of the Gold Hoarders bears the gold curse and will have a name starting with H for Hoarder. Be generous out there. The second faction that you can find is marked by a purple flag with a lighter eye symbol. The Order of Souls will give a bit of a spooky aura around it and will always be located under the Pirate Emporium, which we'll go over a bit later. It's here that you can hand in any skulls that you find and the faction representative of the outpost will always have a name starting with O. The third faction is the Merchant Alliance, and is always located on the dock. Marked with the symbol of the globe, this is where you'll turn in any crates and powder kegs that you find. The general rule for the Merchant Alliance is that as long as it has the globe symbol on it, it will go to the merchants. The trader here will always have a name beginning with M for merchant. The fourth faction is the Athena's Fortune, and is exclusive for pirate legends. I won't give anything else about the faction away. Those mysteries you'll have to uncover yourself once you reach level 50 in three of seven factions. As I said before, there are also plenty of shopping opportunities for your pirate and your ship on the outpost, available through various shops and merchants. The first shop we'll go over is the Pirate Emporium. This is the shop where you can spend your ancient coins on exclusive emotes, ship sets, weapons bundles, and various other cosmetics. It is located above the Order of Souls and is marked with a stack of green coins bearing skulls. If you're looking for something to adorn your tools with, keep an eye out for the shop with a spyglass and shovel creating an X. This is the equipment shop, which is where you can purchase a new look for anything in your equipment wheel. Located out front is also the equipment chest, where you can swap around how your items look if you get tired of looking at the same old spyglass or you feel your shovel isn't working at the best capacity. The shopkeeper inside will always have a name beginning with T for tools. If it's your pirate style you're looking to change, you'll want to point your gaze towards the shop with the boot symbol out front. This is the clothing shop, and it's where you can buy new jackets, hats, hair, tattoos, boots, and anything else that goes on your pirate themselves. Welcome. Out front is a vanity chest for changing your pirate's hair, hair color, tattoos, scars, and curses. There is also a clothing chest so that you can change your pirate's hat, boots, shirts, jackets, dresses, pants, belts, and gloves. The shopkeep will always have a C name for clothing. If you feel your weapon is looking a bit bland, look for the building with the red target out front. It's in the weapon shop that you'll speak with the W name shopkeep and browse various cosmetics for your Blunderbloss, Flintlock, Eye of Reach, and Sword. Out front is an armory so that you can select which two weapons best suit your playstyle, as well as changing out how your weapons look. 
And if it's ship sets that you want, the shipwright with an S name is located on the dock near the Merchant Alliance and has seemingly hundreds of ship's items for you to choose from. Directly in front of the shipwright is a ship customization chest where you'll be able to change how your ship looks so long as it's docked at the outpost. How are your arms feeling with all that information, pirate? Heavy? Just you wait, there's a good bit more. Next to the factions, you may find different tables. Sometimes they may have a little wooden ship figures, sometimes they may not. These are emissary tables and are unlocked by reaching level 15 in the faction you'd like to represent and then purchasing the emissary flag for 20,000 gold. This is a one-time purchase and afterwards, you're able to then lower and raise emissary flags at your leisure. Be careful, for emissary flags of any level and faction are extremely valuable and sought after by many pirates across the seas. We'll dive into emissaries a bit deeper in another episode. On various islands and outposts, you'll find journals scattered around the seas, and when hovering over them, you'll find that you can start what's called a tall tale. These are essentially the game's story mode, and provide lore knowledge to pirates interested. The most prominent tall tales are from the new Pirate's Life update, and are located at the Castaways camp on every outpost. These are the tall tales from the Pirates of the Caribbean, but also include lore pertaining to all the other tall tales. To access the first set of tall tales, there is a book located next to the mysterious stranger on every outpost that you can vote on and begin your journey to the shores of gold. If you get lost looking for the next tall tale, you can simply look on your map table and find the symbol of the tall tale you are looking for. You'll notice that you always start an adventure play session waking up inside of a tavern with your knife and a piece of paper. You can access these notes by bringing up your quest wheel and selecting Notes. These notes will often tell of events happening in the Sea of Thieves. While also yes. inside the tavern, you'll meet the tavern keep with a tea Drink name, please. where she'll refill your tankard for you in case yours runs dry. Finally, before you get ready to set sail, Skin. you'll likely need to stock your you ship. The quickest way to do this is to buy materials from the Merchant Alliance, but those tend to be a bit pricey, especially when starting out. Your other option is to search the barrels on the island for supplies. This tends to be more lucrative than buying supplies outright, for you can find items that turn the tides of naval battle, such as fire bombs, blunder bombs, chain shots, and cursed cannonballs. You can also find random quests this way, and bait for fishing, as well as various types of fruit. In the next lesson at Sammy Stormfish Academy for Sailors, we'll be going over ship types, locations of everything aboard each ship, and how to get moving as efficiently as possible. Do recall that it is imperative that you learn to defuse a powder keg. If you like this video, please feel free to leave a like and comment on what you think the Sammy Stormfish Academy for Sailors should cover next. I'm always willing to hear your feedback. A subscription is also welcome, and if you want to keep updated on this educational series, ring the bell as well. And with all of that being said, thank you for watching, and please remember that I appreciate your existence. Happy sailing, pirates!